Okay, well, we've made up our little bushes and bits and pieces for this W30 carby, and we still have to work out yet where this little fella is going to sit. On the old shaft, it, this fella was sitting on the shaft, but there was two different holes drilled for it, and we're just not sure where it goes. So we'll work that out as we go, but we'll do the overhaul in, in sections where we'll just do one piece, and at the moment we'll just work on this main butterfly shaft area, um, just to get that piece done, and, and then we'll move on to other things. So to start off with, um, we give everything a, an extra hit with a bit of brake cleaner. Just, we've cleaned it, we've blown it out, but we'll do it again. Just to make sure we keep it all nice and tidy. It doesn't take much for a little a jet to block up or something like that. So I'll give that a block. Just to give that a quick tidy up. I just turned the compressor off so um, so it doesn't come in on us without us wanting it to. So right, so down up in down in the corner here, there's a there's a little jet. So we just need to make sure that's nice and clean before we put him in. That's just lovely. And what we've done, we've left the outside as is, so the tractor looks original still, but inside you can see where we've bead blasted everything and you know, bead blasted all the venturis and bits and pieces like that, so we'll just sneak along with this, so we'll get that fella down where it should be. Okay, that's nice and tight. We'll just put a little blobber lock tight around the outer edge of that. Just a snug fit in there, so. That looks okay. We'll get a bit of lube on the shaft here. And we actually have our, we have our idle screw. This fella here, he comes in through here and sits against this shaft so so that comes through into there we'll tidy that up yet but for the moment now this fella here we found a we found a tiny orifice down that come through the side here and out and this little fella here as it turns, it closes the orifice up or opens it up. So, so we've copied this exactly off the other one. Now I thought I saw in here, yes I did, a new little pin for there. Go and get a hammer and a punch. I haven't got it here, I'll take so it away. Line this little bush up here. Now where are we? I'll 
try and have it straight up and down if I can, just so gravity can assist. That's good, that's nice and flush. Yep, flush top and bottom. So we still have some side movement here. And that's good. Because once we put the butterfly in, that'll disappear. In. Bit further around. Okay, I had a bit of a fiddle just then to get this butterfly in. Um, the new shaft was a little bit narrower where that went through but look it, it's turned out alright, it was the right size it just takes a bit to get it sorted out but um, once the once the butterfly's in we just have to make sure that when it shuts there it, it's still nice and free to turn yeah when it shuts it's centralized within the venturi here so So you to give them a little bit of a tap to make sure. And when it's in wide open throttle, you still have a little bit of movement. And look, that's fine, you need that. But when it closes, the movement disappears altogether. And that, that's how you get your good idling. You need to be able to get it idling properly. So, so we have a couple of new screws here. So I always lock tight our, um, our butterfly screws in. You don't want those fellas coming out ever them banging on the top of your piston just wouldn't be a nice look really I can dip me little dip me fat fingers in there we'll be right MIG pliers is what I've been using for some of this stuff nicely and that's nice and easy there up into the bushes there again it all helps okay I'll go and buff this up we'll tidy this little idle mixture screw up and we'll screw him in until our venturi is just opening a little bit and I do have a couple of notes on this carby so we'll we'll have a read and we'll work out how far we're going with Pop that a bit of lube here we haven't tidied this up too much. Like we said, we're trying to keep the original look of the carby. So if we bring this bloke in. Oh, 
and we'll bring him right in until he touches the flat, this flat surface in here. Tried to keep it not clean up. I've, I haven't bead blasted this screw because we need to keep it where it is. I'll keep it looking good. Right, so that's just touching there now. And we can see that our carby is still shut. I'll just back it off a little bit if we can. If you pop a bit of oil around there, you'll actually see see when it just starts to take off. There. So I'll have a quick look at our notes on the carby, and I think it said idling adjustment. Um, The correct idling adjustments usually found between one and three turns open of the idling needle valve. Oh, so that's your that's your fuel mixture, not your fuel speed. So, so look, we'll just take this up a bit so it opens. Just a little. I'll just count them and just see how. I think it's just touching there. So we'll go half, one, one and a half. And that's open about a millimetre. Yeah, we'll do it that. Josh can, he can crank that up further if he chooses to. And he, he may have to, we don't know because we haven't got it on the tractor, but that there is nice and free. The butterfly's coming back against the screw. Now, when the butterfly comes round to maximum, that's still nice and free there. So the governor should take control. That's just lovely. Okay. The needle and seat. Let's have a look at that. Just a little bit of oil on the brass thread as it goes into the housing here. Okay, we've got everything set up. I've just been fiddling with this, um, with the butterfly shaft, making sure that was free. Um, and I read the cutout in this economizer valve here has to go down and I wasn't sure which way I had it so I actually popped that back out to check and that's okay now. Now the float assembly we have a new pivot for that and if we pop the pop the needle in here Float sits there. I think we should be right to get that in later. Yep. So as this comes through, now as it comes into the side with the split on it here, that split is what holds this peg in. So you must make sure that that's nice and firm. See the the other side's just got a hole, so that's just a support. Yep, you can just see there where this one's split here, and that's what holds it in. And so we need to just give it a bit of a There you go. 
I'd normally have things in a vise, but then I can't film them in a the vise properly. Okay, so when we have the, the float sitting down here like that, we have to actually measure now from this surface here to the top of the float on both sides to make sure we have okay, inch and three so quarters. We've got a set of verniers here. Now we we set them to inch and three quarters. So that's 1.750 plus or minus one sixteenth of an inch. That says so when we come there. Okay, look, that's very close. Look, that's right, that's... That's very close as well. So, with a sixteenth of an inch, if we went a sixteenth wider... Um, there we go. That's just touching. I might give it a just a little tweak. There we go. That's just you can just see the air gap. And same here. That's nice and free. I might bring this bloke in just a little bit. It looks like when you run a line straight up from the wall here, it's getting close. So as long as it runs freely, we're good. If we get that right, the carby won't flood. We'll drop him back to exactly three quarters. And do another test. And that's just touching, and just see that touching the float as we come onto it. So that's good. Right, We've got to be happy one. with that. <laughs> okay, now there's a little screw just in here. We'll pop him in. We've got a kookaburra laugh in the background. They're having a look what we're doing, thinking, Christ. Now we have our old mixture screw, which would look nicer, but on the end there, there's just a couple of little flats and things where it's been over tightened in the past, so. We're not going to go with that, we're going to use the new one. I think we'll get a better adjustment. the length. I think the length is the same. We might use the old spring. Let's do a dummy run. Make sure the thread is good. There we go. Okay, so that's just bottomed out. Now on the thing it says set throttle stop screw, which is this fella here. It says one and a half turns, so we'll back that off and just... Let's just touch in there. So, half, one, 
Uh huh. I'll just check that again. That's just. I can just feel it just just touching my thumb there. So half one and a half. Now the idle screw here, one full turn off seat. So you can just feel that's touching there. Half one. So that should be pretty well it for that housing. Um, the fuel inlet goes in here. We do have to work out where this little fella goes yet, but we may be able to work that out okay, a little bit Okay, we're onto the main bowl now, and we have a main jet. Now that main jet, that's been all chowdered up in the past, and what happens with the main jet is when you adjust the needle on your main jet, it sits down the hole and by sitting down the hull it, it restricts the amount of fuel it can get through on full throttle. So when it's on full throttle it's not so important as um, uh, normally when you set the main jet you rev the guts out of the machine and you open this up until you have the power that you need to a certain point. So this has been a bit bodged up inside there and I've just cleaned it up a little bit as best I can, but down in the down inside looks like there's been something sharp down there once before, but look there's nothing we can do about that. Um, we're gonna have to run with it. There's none available that I can find. So and being on full throttle, it should be adjustable. We should be able to get the adjustment that we need. So we'll just we'll just put a Just a tad of oil on there. No need to over tighten these jets. Let's just get them in snug against the washer. I'll see if I can get a Looks like there's a few things selling on eBay, that ka-ching, ka-ching in the background. Never stops. Right, so that's got him started now. We'll just bring this big old flat blade in. Okay, now that's just firm. I noticed when I was blowing it, there was air coming out through here, so we can see that was there was a cut in the in the fibre washer that holds the whole show in. So we should have a nice new washer here for that. Well, probably the right size one would go all right. I'll just put a tad of oil on again. Oil just helps the threads go in nice and snug. And seal it off, it's got to not leak as well. Yeah, the drag is better there now. So we'll nip this up. That's what we're looking for. Okay. So, let's go again. Shed's creaking away. Okay, so we just take that down, you can just feel that touch, half, one turn out as per the book. And I will just nip this gland up again. Some of these adjustments can be filled with once the tractor's tuned. Um, a quarter of a turn each way on this main jet's not going to affect anything at all uh, apart from helping the tractor run better. Now down the bottom here 
we have the drain. Now that's just a little tap to drain any excess fluid out of the carby. Yeah, that's nice and free. We'll drop a little Loctite on that as well, just to seal the thread as much as anything. Do that, and then we'll just nip him up shut. Okay, and we've cleaned all that out, that's okay. That's our old screw. I'll just run through the parts now and then just to make sure there's nothing we're missing. There are our screws, which we're not going to clean up. We might clean the thread, but that's all. We need a new spring washer for one of these fellas, but it's okay. Alright, so I think we should be right to keep him going together. Okay, now what it says here It says, in place of Venturi 50, in position in the bowl, taking note that the notch in the lower step of the Venturi, which is this fella here, is placed over the locking pin on the diffuser bar. We don't have a locking pin on the diffuser bar. That's the, lo that's the diffuser there. There's no sign where there used to be a pin, unless there's a little, little tip there maybe, where they had something one time. There's nothing there, like that's just a, I thought that might have been a locator for a bar like that. Well actually that would be correct because when when you line this here up with this groove here, this is in line with your diffuser. What that does, I don't know. It's I can't see what it would, what difference it would make, but it must make some difference because they bothered to mention it. Okay, so at this stage, we'll just have a good look again, make sure there's nothing that we think we're missing. The gasket's in place nicely there, so we should be able to line these. Line that jet up gently. Line the screws up, yep that looks good. That's an untidy gasket, isn't it? If you're doing a gasket for a carby, you probably wouldn't make it look like that. Must be these blokes. We'll just get a couple started so we know how we're going. That's good. Okay, looks like we've got to find a new bloody washer. One new washer. Alright, we'll go and do that back in a moment. Oh, 
So we just bought these then. Now, what I like to do now is tip them up and see if you can hear the float moving. Hear that? So we know the float's not um, not jamming there at all. We'll come out a little bit further again. So that's looking good. We have in the kit, we have a gasket for the top here and we have a gasket for this side plate here. And this gasket goes for this fella here. Okay, now how would that go? Let's have a look. The nice straight sides, so we we'll presume we have to line up the nice straight sides. Then on the other housing, it's just a flat housing. So that looks good, I believe. Now where's our fuel inlet? Yep, the fuel inlet is here. So this faces away from the fuel inlet. That's our choke. That's our choke mechanism. Yeah, so when we have the fuel outlet here, by looking at our instruction, yeah, this face is directly away from our fuel outlet, so that goes on there like that. One, two, three, and four screws. Put on there. Actually, I better check that again. See if there's any difference. Doesn't appear to be. And we bring another one around here. We probably need to zoom out a little bit more there, don't we?
That screw's got a little bit of a burr. All right, that's the carby. Now, there's a diagram we've been playing with. So, that's how you're looking at it there. The fuel inlet's there, your butterfly shaft's here. She goes out that way. That's all we can work on. Fuel outlet this way, that out that way. Should be good. Well, there you go, Josh. There's your car be done. Um, this little piece up on here, the shaft wasn't drilled, so we've copied off the hole in your old shaft that had the little bit of wear in it so we're presuming that one was used so there's no other way of knowing if that's right or not um, all we had to do was copy copy the other and that was it was off center slightly when we look at a picture um, there's a photo oh wherever I saw it a moment ago down here it looks like they're pretty well in line yet on your old shaft they weren't quite in line so I've gone with the old shaft, that's all we can do. And, um, and that's it. Job done. Anyway, it took a little while, but hopefully that's a good solid repair and um, that'll get Josh up and running with his nice old tractor and he can drive around with a big grin. And that's what it's all about.